Hello everyone. Today we'll be solving Cambridge IGCSE Chemistry Paper 6 Alternative to Practical May June 2021 Paper 63. Question number 1. Cobalt 2 sulfate is a soluble salt. It can be made by reacting insoluble copper 2 oxide with dilute sulfuric acid. A student made a sample of hydrated copper 2 sulfate using the following steps. Step 1. The student added co cobalt 2 oxide into dilute sulfuric acid. Step 2. The mixture was tired and heated. The mixture was allowed to cool. Name the items of apparatus labeled A and B. So A, all right, is a spatula, is a spoon like is a spoon like um, uh, device that we use to transfer uh, substances. So it's called spatula, and B is a tripod that uh, allows a Bunsen burner to uh, basically stay under and then basically hit the reaction mixture. Part B1. Suggest why the mixture was heated in step 2. The mixture was heated in step 2 to increase the rate of reaction because heating increases the rate of reaction. B2. Name an item of apparatus that can be used to heat the mixture in step 2. So we can use a Bunsen burner to heat. Part C. Name the reactant which was in excess. Explain your answer. So we know from the reaction, we can see that there is some unreacted solid that is left. So we can say that cobalt 2 oxide was in excess because there was solid left at the end. Part D. N additional steps are required to obtain pure cobalt 2 chloride. Cobalt 2 sulfate. The unreacted solid is removed from the aqueous cobalt 2 sulfate. Name the process used to remove unreacted solid. So, to remove unreacted solid, we can do filtration. Describe how crystals of hydrated cobalt 2 sulfate could be made from the solution obtained in 1. First of all, in order to get the crystals of cobalt 2 sulfate, we need to evaporate the solution of cobalt 2 sulfate and evaporate most of the water until it reaches a point of crystallization and then we can allow it, you know, we can allow it to cool so that it crystallizes. Question number two. A student investigated the rate at which hydrogen gas was made when magnesium reacted with dilute sulfuric acid. Five experiments were carried out using the apparatus shown. Rubber delivery tube, rubber bung. All right, okay. Conical flask, we can see. Clamp, inverted 100 cm cube measuring cylinder, trough water. So basically, we can see a displacement a displacement uh, will occur when the gas will rise on the measuring cylinder and thereby will get the volume. Experiment 1. Using a measuring cylinder, 25 cm cube of dilute sulfuric acid was poured into a conical flask. Using a different measuring cylinder, 30 cm cube distilled water was poured into the conical flask. The apparatus was set up as shown in the diagram. The bung was removed from the conical flask. A coiled length of magnesium ribbon was added to the conical flask. The bung was replaced immediately and timer started. The volume of gas collected in the inverted measuring cylinder after 30 seconds were measured. Guys, let's see. About the accuracy of this particular experiment, because we are using a measuring cylinder to measure 25 cm cube, measuring cylinder to measure 30 cm cube, obviously these particular volumes are going to be a little bit incorrect. A more better approach of measuring 25 cm cube would be using a pipette and a more better approach for measuring 30 cm cube of distilled water would be a burette. The next thing that we can see is that 
we have removed the bung of the conical flask and we are adding a coil length of magnesium ribbon. When we are going to add the coil length of magnesium ribbon and by the time we would replace that immediately, there might be a possibility that some gas might escape in this particular time. So that can be a source of error as well. The volume of gas collected in the inverted measuring cylinder is 30 cm cube. All right, it was measured. Okay. So experiment one was repeated using 20 cm cube distilled water instead of 30 cm cube. Experiment one was repeated using 10 cm cube distilled water instead of 30 cm cube. Experiment one was repeated using 5 cm cube distilled water instead of 30 cm cube. One was repeated without adding any distilled water to the dilute sulfuric acid. All right. Use the information in the description of the experiment and the inverted measuring cylinder diagrams to complete the table. Volume of dilute sulfuric acid. All right. So the volume of dilute sulfuric acid was used all the time. We know that in every experiment, in every experiment, the volume of dilute sulfuric acid was added 25 cm cube. So we're just going to write 25 in every one of them. All right. Now the volume of distilled water. When we studied the volume of distilled water, we saw that every time it decreased. So the first experiment had 30, then there were 20, then there were 10, and after that there was 5, and then finally there were no distilled water added to it. Then next, we have volume of gas collected in 30 seconds. So volume of gas collected in 30 seconds. For the first experiment, we can see, since this is inverted, we're going to have to read it inverted. So up until this particular point, it's 10. So we're going to write 10. From here till here, it's 19. From 30 till 40, so this is 38. From 50 till 60, and then this is 61. From 90 till 100 in the middle, so this is 95. Part B. Plot the results from the experiment 1 to 5 on the grid. Draw a smooth curve of west feet. Volume of distilled water slash cm cube. Volume of gas collected in 30 seconds. Okay. So the question says, draw a curve, smooth curve of west feet. So we're going to join all the points and try to do a curve. Next, extrapolate, extend the line on the graph and deduce the volume of gas that would be collected in 30 seconds if 35 cm cube of distilled water was added to the dilute sulfuric acid. So we'll have to extend this particular blue line and then we'll have to extrapolate at 35. So the volume will be two, four, six, eight, nine. 9 cm cube. Part D. The rate of reaction can be calculated using the equation shown. Rate of reaction is equals to volume of gas collected divided by time taken to collect the gas. Use this equation to calculate the rate, equ rate of reaction in experiment 3. Give the unit for the rate you have calculated. So volume of gas collected for and the time needed for the collection of the gas. We know the time needed for every experiment in this in this particular place is 30 so it will be 30 and experiment 3 uh, if we look at experiment 3 the volume of gas collected was 38 sorry 38 divided by 30 rate of reaction so the answer will be 1.27 rate 1.27 and uh, the unit will be cm cube and divided by second so cm cube per second state which experiment one two three four five had the highest rate of reaction all right the reaction we can see uh, in the shortest amount of time the highest amount of gas is produced in experiment five so we can definitely say that experiment five has the highest rate of reaction experiment five Part E, the volume of the dilute sulfuric acid was measured using a measuring cylinder. A 25 cm cube pipette could have been used instead of the measuring cylinder. State one advantage of using 25 cm cube measuring, 25 cm cube pipette instead of measuring cylinder. P, 
pipettes are more accurate. Part 2. State 1. Disadvantage of using 25 cmq pipette instead of a measuring cylinder. Using a pipette is slower than uh, you know usually, usually using a measuring cylinder. So uh, it takes more time. Part F. Name another item of apparatus which could be used instead of an inverted measuring cylinder to collect and measure the volume of gas made in this reaction. We could have used the experiment could have used a gas syringe. Okay. Part G. The diagram shows a modified conical flask that could be used in this investigation. Explain the advantage of using this type of conical flask instead of the type used in the investigation. So basically in this kind of when we have a uh, glass divider and we have magnesium reactant on one side aloe sulfate acid reactant on one side we can just simply tip this uh, you know vessel to actually get the reaction going Question number three, solid I and solid J were analyzed. Solid I was chromium three, chloride. Okay, so we already know that there is chromium ion present. And we already know that there is chloride ion present here. But we don't know what is solid J. Okay, complete the expected observation. Solid I was placed in a boiling tube. About 10 cm cube distilled water was added to the boiling tube. The mixture was shaken to dissolve. So, uh, dissolve solid I and form solution I. Solution I was divided into four portions in four test tubes. Aqua sodium hydroxide was added dropwise and then in excess to the first portion of the solution I observation. So with chromium ion adding aqua sodium hydroxide, we're gonna get green precipitate. However, when we're gonna add the uh, sodium hydroxide in excess, we're gonna get a, you know, the green precipitate is going to dissolve to form a green solution. Part B, aqueous ammonia, aqueous ammonia was added dropwise and then in excess to the second portion of solution I and observation. We know that with chromium ion, when we add aqueous ammonia, we're going to get gray green precipitate. However, excess ammonia does not dissolve the gray green precipitate. Part C. About 1 cm cube of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqua silver nitrate were added to the third portion of solution I. Now we know that dilute nitric acid followed by silver nitrate is a test for halide. So if there is any halide present, it will be detected. Now we are, the compound I is basically chromium chloride, so we will see white precipitate. Part D. About 1 cm cube of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous barium nitrate were added to the fourth portion of solution I. So we know that nitric acid followed by barium nitrate is a test for sulfate. And in this compound, there is no sulfate present. So the observation will be no change. Test on solid J. A flame test was carried out on solid J, lilac flame. Lilac flame is an indication of potassium ions. The remaining solid J was placed in a boiling tube and about 10 cm distilled water was added to the boiling tube. The mixture was shaken to dissolve solid J to form solution J and test tube. About 5 cm of dilute nitric acid was added to the solution J. Any gas produced was tested. So we are adding nitric acid. It produces effervescence. 
and lime water turns milky that means there is presence that it produces carbon dioxide and acid produces effervescence all right and the gas produces uh, lime water milky it turns lime water milky definitely it's a carbonate so carbonate test three a few drops of aqua silver nitrate were added to the reaction mixture no visible change identify the gas formed in test two so the gas formed in test two is definitely carbon dioxide and when they say identify the solid J, because of the purple color of the flame, we know it's potassium. And after the addition of acid freezing and then followed by the test of gas producing, uh, test of gas proving CO2, that means it's a carbonate. So potassium carbonate. Question number four. The energy given out when different liquid alcohols are burned can be compared using the apparatus shown. We can see thermometer, test tube, water, spirit burner, liquid alcohol. Describe how the apparatus shown can be used to compare the amount of energy given out by three different liquid alcohols, ethanol, propanol, and butanol. Your answer should include how the results can be used to determine which fuel gives out the most energy. All right. So this is a very good question. All right. For each of the experiment, we must use the same amount of water. For example, 200 grams of water. All right, and we must start the you know we must start the experiment at the uh, same uh, you know we must start the experiment at the same temperature of water like at say twenty five degrees Celsius, and then we will heat the water using a spirit burner for for all three fuels. All right, now we want to compare the amount of energy given out by three different liquid alcohols. All right, so we will then you know start. So we will first of all what we're going to do is we're going to measure the mass of the fuel plus the speed burner at the start and then we're going to heat to a set temperature for the water so like let's say from 25 degrees celsius we're going to take the water to like 80 degrees celsius and then measure the mass of the fuel that was needed at the end and subtract it from the first mass of the uh, you know fuel all right to find out the mass of the fuel used then uh, you know smallest mass of fuel that would be required to have that particular uh, temperature change all right would indicate that highest amount of energy given out Thank you guys. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.